In this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to close more deals by improving your listing presentation. My name's Toby Salgado. I'm the host of the number one top-rated podcast for real estate agents. It's called Super Agents Live, and I encourage you to go check it out. Now, because of the show, I've been able, over the last two years, I've been able to interview 400 of the nation's top producing agents. I break down their businesses. I find out what's working, what they're struggling with, so that you guys don't have to make those mistakes. So hopefully you guys can energize, jumpstart your business from day one. I recently had the opportunity to interview best-selling author Orrin Claff. Now, Orrin wrote a book called Pitch Anything. In his book, Pitch Anything, he outlines his formula for creating the perfect pitch, the same formula that he uses and has used to raise over half a billion dollars as an investment banker. I wanted to, I can tell you that, that the book's so good, the content's so good, I've implemented it in my pitch and it's helped me tremendously and I think it can help you. I wanna share you some of the, uh, the highlights of, uh, of the formula. So we're gonna talk about four things, five things. Number one, the length, the ideal length of your pitch. Number two, the push-pull technique. Number three, how to frame yourself as the prize. Number four, the two things you should stop doing right now. Let's start with that. Now, the two things you stop doing. Now, over the last 50 years, sales training has always been the same. Go in, create rapport, get them to know, like, and trust you, close, right? ABC, always be closing. It's been done so much from people selling wireless cell phone plans to TVs to cars. We see it from a mile away. Those things used to work, they don't anymore. So, so one of the, the things that, the first thing, build rapport, build rapport, that you, you know, high school kids here, um, Oren in his book says, don't do that. That's a waste of time, right? And an example of this, you walk in at your listing presentation and you see somebody, their, their college diploma, San Diego State, and you go, oh, hey, you went to San Diego State, so did I. Hey, you went to San Diego State, so did my wife. Hey, I see that you vacation in Florida. We were just there last summer. It's a waste of time. Now, it has happened to me, and I'm sure it's happened to you, so I, I've let this go on for sometimes 10 minutes. I'm amused the first two or three, I'm annoyed the last seven, and eventually I just go, hey man, get to it. So stop trying to build rapport. All that time is wasted, number one, just because you went to the same school and you vacation in the same spot as that guy, that girl, doesn't mean they're gonna buy from you. So stop doing that. The second thing that, that gets commonly done is you project neediness. Now there's a lots of ways to project neediness. Now a few and very blatant ones are, um, hey, if you list your house with me, I promise you, I will, treat, I will give you so much attention, I will treat you like you're my only client. You're a needy guy, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna work with you. You clearly are not that great because you should have a billion clients, right? So don't, don't, that's, that's, you're projecting neediness. Um, um, another way to project neediness, hey listen, I give my clients so much attention, I'm available Monday through Friday, 24 seven, whatever it is. Projecting neediness. Now, we'll get to, we'll attack some of this when we get to pricing, but those are the two things you stop doing right now. When you go into a new listing presentation, don't say, thanks for taking the time out. Don't say, I appreciate that you could carve time. Don't, like, don't say thank you. You're a professional, you are number one, you are good at what you do, you should roll in and say, I'm glad that we could both carve out the time to meet together to, to figure out how we can get the most money for your house. All right, so I can go on and on, I'm not gonna. Okay, two things stop doing. Number one the ideal length of your pitch. Now, that is 20 minutes. Now, that doesn't mean that the meeting can't go on for longer than 20 minutes, but you pitching, saying, rolling out your big idea, rolling out why they should, why you're the best person, and then finally explaining how they can, you guys can work together. Your pitch, 20 minutes. Now, read Orrin's book, it's in the book, this is rooted in science, we don't have enough time to cover it here. Just trust me on this, it's 20 minutes. And I can tell you, I've pared my pitch down from about 32 minutes, I'm down to about eight minutes now. And it's uber effective. 
Uh, I just did it yesterday, and the guys, the guy, literally after eight minutes of me, uh, I was picking my kids up from school, from my house to the school, which is three blocks away. I was done with my pitch, and the guy's like, "It's clear you know what you're doing. How do we work together?" I don't close. Okay, so maximum pitch. Now look, and that's okay if you can't go twenty, no problems. If you can't go eight, no problems. If your pitch is four minutes, perfect. Don't sweat it. Okay. So maximum pitch length, 20 minutes, or ideal pitch length. The second thing is push-pull. Now this push-pull is, is a little bit difficult to, to explain. Um, so I'm gonna give you an illustration. Now in the book, and I'll, and I'll tell you how, how I use it a little bit, or, or I say how it manifests itself when I get calls today. In the book, Oren explains the situation uh, with Mad Men, right? The, the TV show Mad Men. And in Mad Men, there's a scene where Don Draper is pitching the potential client. And they're going in saying, hey, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do whatever. Now the, the client's pulling back. They're like, I don't like that, I don't like this, or that. And after a few minutes, and I don't know how long, I haven't seen the, 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 the segment for a while, but um, out of nowhere, Don Draper stands up, puts out his hand and says, thanks very much for your time, opens the office door, and shows him the way out. Now, everybody's shocked, everybody. The clients are shocked, the other teammates are shocked, and they're like, oh, what are you doing? And he's like, it's clear you're not a believer. It, there's no sense in playing kabuki theater. And what happens? Don just pushed them away. What then happened was the client's like, wait, 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 hold on a second, sit back down. Now, if you finish this segment, what'll happen is the client then starts saying how they're right to work together, okay? Don pushed them away, and then there was a pullback. Now I can tell you, this just happened to me in a call. I got a call from a, a smaller team and uh, there are two people, you know, for, for radio, as you, and hopefully you guys know that we do radio, but, but they were a smaller team. And I talked to them for a little bit. I said, listen, you're not our ideal size. And, and uh, you know, because we can only work with one person per market, you're not our ideal size. And what happened was they, they said, wait a second. Yeah, let me convince you that we're right for you. Um, and they did, they, they, they said, hey, listen, we'll do whatever it takes, uh, you know, we'll put money in the bank, whatever it is, and finally they convinced me enough that I said, okay, you know what, maybe we can make an exception, let me talk to some of our team members. So I pushed them away, and it was a real genuine push. They were not, this was not a technique I pushed them, they, or, or I threw on them, they were an ideally not a good fit for us, and, and, I, and, and the result was, they, were, they, they sold me, and then I was able to pull them back in. So push-pull. Now, just think about how you can use that push-pull in your own business. Maybe it's, hey guys, I like you, I like your house, this is not the neighborhood we work in. But I might be able to make an exception. Hey, I like you, I like your house, I love that you wanna move your kids to the school system, even though this is not the ideal uh, a type of house that we deal in, we're, we normally deal in high-rise condos, waterfront, I love that you guys wanna get your kids in that school, will be willing to make an exception. Push, pull, all right. So just again, think about how you might be able to use that. If you need more explanation of this, listen to my podcast with Oren, superagentslive.com slash Oren, or pick up his book. The last thing is prizing. Now prizing is making you the prize. What you have, they want. What people can't have, it, they always want it. Whether it's a girl, whether it's a car, what you can't have, you want. So you wanna make yourself the prize. Now if you go back to that, that me explaining about those phone calls that I get, when I tell them we specialize in putting real estate agents on the radio, we, double, we focus on doubling their business, and we can only work with one person in each market, I'm clearly setting us up as the prize. Now, that's not a technique, that's real, but when, when I put them out like, hey, this is the last one on the sell shelf, when you introduce any kind of scarcity, people automatically want it. I wanna get that before it's gone. So, prize yourself. A few different ways you can prize yourself. Hey guys, listen, we have an exclusive marketing system designed to get you full price. We have an exclusive system designed to get you over market, 20% above comps, whatever it is. But there's, we, we already have somebody if, if, you know, in this market or field. So you know, again, make yourself the prize. If you prize yourself, introduce scarcity, push them away, pull them back, what's gonna happen is you're gonna close that deal. So listen, guys, appreciate 
you've taken the time out. I hope you've gotten at least one or two nuggets from this. If you have any questions, I'm always, you can send me an email. I, res, I read all my emails. I read everything. Uh, go listen to the show, superagentslive.com. And if you think you're the right size of a team and you want to double your business in radio, go check out Real Estate Radio Experts. Fill it, please fill out the Getting Started sheet. Um, that'll give us some background information to see if you're a good fit before we even talk. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.